That's it. There's, I think we're here. I, there's still tears in my eyes. Oh my God, she is killing me. Hello, everybody. How are y'all doing today? <laughs> this is Kathy. Hi. And I'm Molly. <laughs> and together we are crazy as two lungs. Oh, no, we're sorry. living in scraps. So today we're bringing you the tutorial that many of you asked for, and that's to make the thread beds. Would you like to show us some of your thread beds and what the heck we're talking about? Absolutely. And, and I'm just going to tease Molly here a little bit because the last video we did, she had like four and five pair of glasses on her. And even she didn't recognize the York patty here that we have down in front of <gasps> It's just sitting there waiting for her. But it, anyway. It's our reward. Yes. Okay. So yes, I would absolutely. Um, had a lot of comments about asking for a tutorial about our thread beds, and we realized there was a lot of threads that needed to be apparently put to bed. <laughs> um, so this is very similar in the making, if you will, to the floss book tutorial that we did. Very similar uh, ways of putting these together. So the, you, if you haven't seen that video already, take a peek at that. Um, we will go through it step by step here as well, but it's just kind of a nice way to get yourself a little bit familiar. There are two methods of madness, Molly's way. I like the more primitive look. So you can see the edges on the bottom are roughed up and stained with Tim Holtz. Mm -hmm. Molly has hers that are beautifully folded in. And my elastic's attached because otherwise I'd lose it. Mm -hmm. What she's talking about is here, instead of cardboard, you're seeing um, right. paper is folded over. Right, and you can see my cardboard. Mm -hmm. um, it's folded over and, and I'll spread that off there. And then my inside was this. So, yeah, so we're going to get started on that and show you how we put our threads to bed. That's cute. How Isn't we put our threads, threads to, bed? to bed. Yeah, so give us a minute and we'll get set up. Okay, Kathy, I think we're ready for you. All right. right. Well, I have already picked up, I'm going to move these, get rid of these here. <clears throat> We'll have a little bit more working room. So, and what we need to start out with, of course, is you're going to pick your scrap paper that you absolutely love. In my case, I chose this um, along enough scrap paper for the, your front and the back. I will be having to use it inside, so I chose a plaid for my inside. And like I said, this is very similar to our floss books, but in my case, what I did then is I used the double face tape and this situation is this is called Elizabeth Craft Designs. I purchased this off Amazon. And I think it's a 25 year yard roll, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. So what I did then is I applied tape to one side already just to kind of get the things get us rolling here a little bit. And I'm gonna apply my tape here with you all. Um, once you determine your paper and the size of your thread bed, and really these can be any size. I, I wouldn't limit yourself to anything specific because I think there's a, a great opportunity to use a old postcard or um, possibly an old greeting card. In, in this case, I like the craft paper that I chose here for this, so I made it just the size of what I was seeing that mm -hmm. I liked. Um, so don't limit yourself to anything size-wise because and therefore we're not going to give you dimensions because at the end of the day we want to make sure that you utilize what you're going to need or, or apply what you're going to need um, based upon what paper you've chosen. And in Molly's case of course you're going to have to allow a little bit more paper for folding of the edges um, but she'll get to that when she does her. So I'm going to go ahead, I, like I said I put <clears throat> tape on one side already. I'm going to get rid of this one. Uh, and I'll be applying my double face tape to this. Pretty easy. You want to make sure that you have a working surface as well as... Can I push you up just a little bit? Yeah, you sure, sure okay. can, Molly. Mm -hmm. I'm just scoot up here a little bit. Um, a little bit, like I said last time, too. A little bit cumbersome to work with, but you do have some room. You're able to cut off what you aren't going to need by our handy-dandy tool that I absolutely love. And this was purchased at... There you go, thank you. Where did we get this that. one at? Joanne's. Molly got me my very own. And can we all see that? I'm just going to cut that, trim that up a little bit. In this case, my tape uh, was not quite as wide as what I needed. So I'm just going to double it up here. I'm not going to worry about the uh, the edges or the center is not going to have tape on it. That's okay. It's going to have plenty of tape. Plenty of tape here anyway. So I'm going to turn this around and make it easy for me. Something just went caboodle. Apply this here. 
Got a big roll here, Molly. <laughs> I see that. Yep. And we'll put that on there like that. You can use your, I always call them the squeegees, they're not the squeegee. But you can use your, right, what do they call them? The brayer. Brayer, yeah. Mm -hmm. To make sure that they're down. We'll get rid of that out of the way. And I'm just going to clean this up a little bit so that we have some nice clean edges to work with. Again, this tool, I, we picked this up at uh, Joanne's. My sister was able to get one when she got home. So she was happy about that since we had checked the Joanne's here and they were all sold out. <coughs> I think it's because Molly told everybody about them. <laughs> We're just going to clean that up. Clean that up. And I think we did a pretty good job getting that off. Okay. So you're going to want to do this to both, both sides of your chipboard, front and back. So you're going to, in my case, I had to do this four, four times front, four times on the back. And I'm just going to use this little tool to make sure it's nice and tight. Any uh, air bubbles, get that out of there. And you can see that my tape was not as big, but it is in the center, so I'm not going to worry too badly about that. So then I'm going to take my paper that I've chosen, pull these edges off, and this takes a little bit. I kind of find that's the hardest part of the whole I thing. I know. And like I said at the last video, if you can't get it off on... Number one, you've got four more to, three more to pick from. So, grab that one there. And sometimes chipboard on the corner does raise a little bit. You can see there, maybe right here. I just take a little glue, tuck that in there. Um, after I get it kind of matted down, if you will, or push down enough. Yeah, that one's going to be a little bit of glue. And then, um, again, taking care as to if you have a one-way design going on here or where you'd like to have your piece centered, um, I'm going to take a little bit of care and the like piece that's going to be there. You were saying, Molly? Nothing. Okay. And I'm just going to apply this here. I'm going to try to get the everyday on there because I like that part. And now you can see I'm going to have to do some trimming over my paper. Make sure that's nice and tight. <clears throat> and I'm going to trim this with that same tool. Just pushing up against, pushing up against that chipboard. We talked about chipboard too. We use the chipboard that's for the most part made. I'd have to go over it once or twice to get it. And I probably didn't push that down just hard enough there. But Molly had talked about um, gluing pieces together, making your own chipboard. Um, I think people were using cereal boxes and would you use two or three? Do you think, Molly? I, don't, I just would decide what hand. I want the chipboard that you're using is a pretty nice, sturdy, heavyweight chipboard. Mm -hmm. It would probably take three uh, layers to, make, to that. make that. But the glue will add a firmness to it. Oh, that's true. You know, if you're taping it or that, that layer true. will. Go like plywood, you know, being harder because of the glue. Uh, and for me, I'm going to sand my edges anyway, so it's not too terrible to have. Um, a little bit of a, a rough edge on there because it's going to come off anyway when I buff them down, sand them down a little bit before we add the Tim Holtz. Then I'm going to do the same to the back and I have my paper. I have not cut this paper because I have big enough room on here to kind of play a little bit um, to put it down where I need to but the other piece it was specific to these four squares and I wanted to make sure it fit enough so I did Kind of pre-cut those a little bit. Sometimes if you get all your tools ready before you start doing a project, it helps if you can kind of set your set your table, if you will. These off of there. And for those of you who scrapbook and remember the old scrapbooking papers, 
That first paper that she used, the pretty little floral print, that's a Prima paper that I bought so many years ago. But the plaid she's using is actually from Daisy D, Thank and you. it's even older. I can't even remember how old that paper is. It probably over 15 years. Fun, you're getting using up all that good stuff, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. just nice to be able to know you bought it one day because you liked it, and now you're using it up to get rid of it. So it's kind of nice, and I'll have to trim that one as well. But we'll just get it nice and flat for the time being. <clears throat> we'll cut this way first. Yeah, and I probably need to change out Kathy's blade, maybe. Oh, that one was good. Oh, I might have just not. It might be the angle we're working at, too. Mm -hmm. Yep, that one went right away, too. Molly's been stitching up a storm. I have. I have Mine's really been enjoying threads. it. Uh -huh. Yep. And I've been working on my Ms. Plummer. And she's coming along nicely. Yesterday, for some reason, though, I just was not in the mood. It's been really hot here in El Paso. Really hot. Um, just have not... Some days you just don't want to do anything. <clears throat> okay. So, you can see there's a little bit of a difference between the two. Um, this one has been inked up. First I've sanded of course the edges and uh, Molly and I decided to at this particular corner here we curved it with her wonderful tool that does the curving on this and this is also by a, a crocodile corner chomper. Yes it's We yeah. Are Memory Keepers is the brand. It's the same brand that made that crocodile that we used that to punch the used. holes. Mm -hmm. But it, it uh, rounds your corners. It has two different sizes that you can insert your chipboard and uh, And so right. now Molly was very astute in telling me that we you should decide what's your front and your back and the corners that you're going to want to cut then would be your front corner here and then your back corner here top and bottom top and bottom you don't necessarily wouldn't do both all off or right because so this, these, these middle back. pieces are going to be covered by the binding so right. well, I wouldn't want them rounded and there are two sizes available oh that's the half inch you're on the bigger one we now. don't want the big one okay. we want the little one there you go good eye good eye Molly can you do that on camera so in case I you say, sure can you slip that into that corner all the way slide it in all and remember that is heavy chipboard and two pieces of paper and tape. Yeah. And it just chomps right yep. through it. And I'm going to go to the back side and do the same just to clean up that edge a little bit. And then uh, there might be something you might have to poke out of it, but I think we're still good. I'm on the right side. Yeah. It's got a little, uh, this little thing is a little, oh, oh, a little she's clean. way off camera there. Uh, it's got a barrel on side of it that holds quite yeah. a bit of okay. trash. Uh-huh. That you need to clean out. So again, making sure you got your right corner. Slide that in there and punch. And it is a little. It's thick. It's no thick. Doubt about it. Mm -hmm. But that's we are member keepers. The brand, if y'all are familiar with that, they they were a book binding family, you know, company. So when they make a tool, it's a good heavy duty, yeah, meant to last a lifetime yeah, tool. Looks great. Mm -hmm. You don't have to use that. You can use your corner square. Just the rounded corners do make it a little more comfortable in your hand and reduce poking and fraying. And so I'm going to take this, I'm going to do some sanding, and you want to talk about yours a little bit, Molly, or am I shaking the table here? I don't That's all right. You're okay, right. I'm going to keep sanding. I am back with my, this is actually going to be my front, uh, fully uh, sanded on the edges, and now I'm going to just be applying some Tim Holtz Distress Ink. This color is Ground Espresso. Goodness, that's wonderful. Yeah, I, but what a difference that made from here to here. Isn't that amazing? It really is. Mm -hmm. it really is amazing. So I'm just going to be inking that up and chit chat in here with Molly a little bit. I'm sorry, I've got it where you got to reach in to get on camera. But, oh, that's uh, all right. That is just fine. We're not going to do I have both cameras set up on one uh, stand. I need to get a second stand so I can get closer with that other one. But uh, We're this, getting there, though. This too shall come. Yeah. We certainly have had a lot of comments, wonderful comments about the... Oh, gosh. 
the uh, videos or floss tubes that we've done already, and that's it, it, they have been fun. And I was thrilled to death to hear how many ladies made some floss books. I know a couple of them sent uh, pictures. I'm thrilled that they if they used up some of their paper. It's like, yeah. Yay. Some of them have uh, sent us some pictures, and that's really nice to see. Um, and how creative. And everyone, ha what's so neat about this, too, is your personalities really oh, uh -huh. have a tendency to shine. And I haven't seen those these. pictures. I got to see the pictures. Ah, I think they're on my Instagram. Ah. I think that's why. Ah. Yeah. You don't ever look at Instagram. I need to get on there more. Yeah, I, 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 I'm on there quite a bit. A lot I'm, of needle workers uh, seem to be on there. And I'm hearing more and more people that's they're going to Instagram rather than a Facebook. Yeah, not that they're not still going to be on Facebook, but they're moving more and more toward Instagram. Instagram. Mm -hmm. I wonder why. I don't know. I don't know. I do like Instagram though. Mm -hmm. I think that there's. I. It seems like you can fine tune into your more of your hobby or your likes. Mm -hmm. A lot, a lot easier. Probably so. Yeah. So like I said, I'm just going to ink that up. The front, I do ink the front too. That's probably what gave me that little bit of a antiquer color here. Molly always warns me, once it's on, <laughs> it ain't coming off. So I think we're getting the look that we're, that we're after. What do you think, Molly? You think I think they're pretty good? stunning. Pretty good match. Uh -huh. Looks do. like Wizard of Oz here in this one. The tornado is on its oh, way. Oh, it does. It really does. Yeah. So, okay. I think we're good. All right. So, that is what I do for my inking. Now, you're probably all wondering. Um, I'm just going to double check what you see. So, we have a front and the back and the insides. So, you're probably wondering how we put this together. <clears throat> I, over time, have used um, tool tape, and my tool tape that I use comes from various different little things. I've uh, saved tool tape over a, from a set of sheets that I've maybe ordered, or anything that has tool tape wrapped around, and there's quite a bit. Um, but what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to leave enough space here so that it doesn't close real tight but that I have some room because we're going to be filling these up with floss we're going to be filling them up with possibly a needle minder in there um, a little maybe thread organizer so I'm going to leave probably the very much that I can get away with as far as width wise for my tool tape ideally I would probably have chosen a piece of tool tape that is a little bit wider than this to give me a little bit more room. But don't forget, we are going to be applying our felt, which is going to go over the top of that. And I can see we're going to have to cut some off here, but which will give this a little bit more uh, support to a little bit more structure or what have you to it. So once we get this glued on, um, we'll be able to do the felt on the inside. So. I, again, prefer a more primitive look, so for me, I'm going to be gluing mine on the outside of my book. I'm going to be gluing mine on here. So that's what I'm going to do. So I, I think, Molly, I'm going to borrow your glue, if that's okay. And Just remember, that's the one that comes out like a fire hose. I know. I saw Molly at that today. Oh, my gosh. I was swimming in it. I'm not going to be too um, too precise on the edge because I'm going to cut that off anyway. But I do like to have mine straight, so I'm going to try to get this very straight here and very straight when I apply my when I apply my tool tape there. So I'm just going to quick look here for a second. <clears throat> Molly, you can go ahead and say hi if you choose. But I did have one cut, but I'm not going to worry about it. We we'll just have to make another one the same size. All right, gluing we go. It's fine. It's fine. And we are using, I believe this is Michael's me a multimedia glue, right now? Yes. And I'm just gonna put a bead there. And kind of rub that in a little bit. Okay. I got the cat. 
Oh, and by the way, we made these. Isn't that not the cutest? So I'm just going to make sure that's all the way down to the end. Kind of slide that out a little bit. Don't care if it gets on the edges. On the inside edge, I'm fine. Molly always has these handy. And these are great tools to have at your She's talking about baby wipes. It's not on the camera. Sorry. I can so, always keep baby wipes in here. Like I said, I'm in fact I'm gonna cut this just because I don't want to have to hassle with working on it so much. So I'm just gonna apply and I'm gonna do it this way. This might be a little bit out of camera for you guys, but I'm gonna put it here. I don't know if you yeah, I guess everyone can see that. But I don't want it tight either because I, I do want to have some room. I do want to have some room for this to be expanded on when we start loading up loading it up. So I just want to make sure that I have my right, I'm going to do this one right to the edge. And you kind of want to make sure your tops and your bottoms are even. And I think we're pretty good. I like to have about the same width of glue or twill tape I should say under the glue as what we've got here and I'm just going to flatten that out and I'm going to use this tool just to squeegee that glue wherever it might need to be and you can see that it'll close nicely so that's where I'm going to leave that and then I'm going to put my felt which I'm going to have to cut that up a little bit I think we're going to have to cut that up. So while I cut that up, maybe we'll take a little bit of a break. Okay, no. So we're back, um, and I have my tool tape attached to both front and back. Again, I mentioned I'm a little bit more primitive, like a little bit more primitive look. Um, again, measurement-wise, there's nothing specific here, other than I do like to have maybe a quarter of an inch to a, probably about a quarter of an inch around the edge exposed so that I do get to see a little bit of my because for the most part, we're going to cover that up. Um, but I do like to see a little bit of it. Just it makes me feel good when I get to look at something pretty. That we've used some pretty paper on. So I'm going to glue this down. And using Molly's wonderful glue again. This is a little bit tricky in the sense that um, you do want to have a nice flat surface of your glue, not lines. So what I would do is I'm going to actually start here. And I'm going to go like this. And down the side here. I'm not going to go in the center. And I'm going to smear that out a little bit. Now you're probably going to need, um, you're probably going to need uh, to get in the edges again at some point, but um, with a little bit of glue just to kind of make up from what you missed if you can't get it spread around all that well. And I could have got you a paintbrush if I'd have known. I, we could have, huh? I didn't Almost know. painted that. So we're just going to get that. I don't care if it goes in here. That's fine. I don't, I don't want it squeeze, squeezing out on the sides if I can help it. But at least you're not going to get the, the big lines. And we are in El Paso, Texas. And I will tell you that up at the top here is already <laughs> drying. It's kind of amazing how fast how fast it dries here. So I'll just get that going. And I'm just, really what I'm just doing with this is just centering it. I'm going to center my glue after I, I bought, or center my piece of felt. And I'm just going to center it the best I can, kind of eyeballing it. I'm upside down, so hopefully it'll look good to you. And yeah, make it good to me. And that looks pretty good. And I'm going to let that dry a little bit, but one thing I do like to do, um, that off. Oh, maybe we can move that down a little bit. Let me slide that down. It's hard to do this stuff when you're upside down, Molly. I know. Almost doing it on your head. There, that looks better. A little bit more even. And you got to play with it. I like to get it nice and straight, but I also like to fold it at this point. And I think it's important to do that so that you get it, it has a kind of a natural fold, if you will, once mm -hmm. you get your glue in there. 
Um, the last thing you want to do is not be able to fold it once you get your, your felt down. So I think it's important to, to do that. So we're going to let this dry for a little bit and we'll come back and show you how we finish it up. And some of the ones that we did, um, this one here. We have our inside pieces that we want to talk about and how we're going to be marking our threads. Um, so we'll show that to you as well. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. So we are back. This had a little bit of an opportunity to, to dry. For myself and the inside, um, and this again, there's a couple different ways that you can do this. Let me turn this around here so you can see. I actually like having the holes. I picked this up Hobby Lobby Yarnology cards. I cut this one down to what width or what length I think I'd like to have. I do like to pull from my floss drop an entire six inch, six inch, six piece, one six uh, piece of thread. So you have a, an 18 inch piece of thread, but there's six strands to it. I do like to put them through here. Um, but I also like to have a way where it's kept organized enough so that if I do have some left from that one strand of the six that I pull, that I can mark it easy enough. So I can uh, nest it up here or I can just quickly, very quickly weave it back in, just tuck it in here. I might not do the drop type look, but I can tuck that thread underneath there and it's marked. So for marking it, what I like to use is a post-it tape. Um, that actually can go on as a strip and that posted tape then will allow me to make a straight line up. I can write my um, floss numbers or floss color depending upon what it, thread it is that you're using. I can actually write that on here and I have a pretty way, a good way to organize that. So to get this on here first I'm going to punch a hole here and I'm going to use Molly's little hole punch that she has and we're going to use I think we can just use this little one here, don't you think, Molly? That I think. One? Yeah, we're just going to use the crocodile. Mm -hmm. And we're going to, I'm just going to punch myself a hole, try to center it a little bit. And it's crop, C R O P. Oh, yeah. crocodile. But it, it, it acts like a crocodile. It is like a sure. crocodile. That's why they named it that. But so if you're looking for it online, it's crocodile. I'm mm -hmm. going to weave my one, this is elastic. Uh, thread, if you will. I got this at Hobby Lobby. In this case, it's the Colorful Thick Cord. This is uh, 1.2 millimeter elastic. Comes in a, quite a few different variety of colors. I love those colors. Yeah, aren't they pretty? They are. So I'm just going to weave this one through here that we pulled. And I'm going to put it around my book. <clears throat> and then I'm going to come up in the hole that was left here from my trimming. I'm going to have it elastic enough, but I'm going to tie a knot here. That then will, and I, I like to add a couple of them. I've added a little bit of beads too, but you can see that at least it holds that in there. Um, and it's not taut, it's not tight, tight where I cannot get at it. So if I wanted to lift this thing up and really dig at some floss, but yet yeah, leave it yourself enough tail. So if you wanted to put a bead, like I did here on my patriotic one, you could decorate it up a little bit that way too. Anything. Anything to add up a little bit of, of scraps to it. And then also, um, on my other scrapbook, I had taken the light bulb, can you see all those? Yeah. The light bulb, uh, kind of like a safety pin, only it's a little bit different style. And these come in a multitude of colors. Again, this is uh, uh, one that I ordered off of Amazon, and I'll have to get, uh, get the links to you. But I like to pick a color that might look kind of nice out of here, and I actually kind of like the browns. So I might take a couple of these, open them up, pin them on here, and then it gives me just one more extra little thread. What do you call that, Molly? I don't know, a way to loop your thread A way to loop it. One more additional way to loop thread yeah. um, and get it off. And because you're working on flannel, you literally could just loop your thread through. Yeah. And it's not going it's anywhere. It's not going to go anywhere. Yeah, you don't have to. But these are nice too. So if you wanted a little bit more, a few more opportunities or options here to be able to have more thread, or certainly this might not be enough. Some of these samplers that we're stitching on have, you know, 20, 30 different colors to them. So whatever. And you could certainly add this to this outside too. If you mm -hmm. wanted, you could add another one. Mm -hmm. And then to close it off. I have bought the um, fold over elastic, which just goes on here. Again, you can okay. add a charm. 
There you go. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, so that's all right. You, get, you can add a charm to it just to kind of decorate it up a little bit, but um, it keeps everything nice and tight. Again, it's big enough that you can put a, a needle minder in here, or you can add, um, uh, a, maybe it's your needles you want to keep track of in here, but yet it's got enough room to close and not uh, pull itself apart. Needle minder that um, Molly helped me make, this is actually the inside of the paper. There is a little cow here with a rose, but this side has the little pig. Is that cute? I love what? the little pig. So I probably will tuck him up here. So I took the magnet off of here, but I'll probably use an earth magnet just to apply that and have my little needle binder in there as well. So that is my floss book, or excuse me, my thread bed. Very similar to the floss books. And the easy to make. And easy to make. Okay, now yep. Kathy, if you don't mind, I'm, I'm going to slide over so Molly can show off hers. It's so. pretty simple, similar, yep. but, but different. But different. I'm going to show you how I make mine, and we're going to talk about what's just a little bit different than Kathy's. Um, mine, one of the things you'll notice, my elastic's attached. You know, I have enough trouble hanging on to things without having something loose, so I just did it where it was attached. Second, while her edges are the raw chipboard, which is a wonderful, beautiful, primitive look and all, mine has got the folded over paper so that it's a little bit more uh, protected edges and the paper rolls in. And then I don't do, my felt is what covers the inside. My felt stretches across here and then I put a trim here. So I'm going to show you what I picked out for today and try to get through this. Okay, I'm going to start off with, um, you know, we're going to be celebrating Christmas in July soon. So I went ahead and picked a Christmas print, and it's a botanical print, and I will tell you who it's by if I can remember. Um, I think it's Simple Story scrapbook paper, uh, but it's a beautiful botanical print. So I've cut a nine by six inch piece of chipboard. Now Kathy took that good heavy chipboard you saw her use. You hear her laughing over there. She gives me this little cheesy piece of oh chip. This is my old chipboard. The woman gives me this piece of chipboard that doesn't weigh half an ounce. So mine's lighter weight. The good news is it's lighter weight. So anyway, I put it in here. So I've done one already to show you the construction. What I've done is I glued my cover, you know, I put glue on this, on the chipboard side, put it down here, brayered it like she said, and then I cut my corners just like this. So let me go ahead and do that. Now, my paper is going to curl. Did I mention it was thin? I'm not sure if I mentioned that or not. It's thin, if I didn't mention that. Thin, thin, thin. Okay, so anyway, we're going to just use, you know, our favorite I tools here. I watched YouTube not that long ago that said you could put two or three pieces together. Oh, someone recommended that, I'm sure. Okay, now I want to take just a quickie look at my paper to see where I want to. I want to go as far this way as I can. Okay, but you'll notice I'm leaving enough to come in, to turn. So I'm putting that down. And then when I say I'm cutting my corners, you want to cut your corners so that you are about as far away from the corner as the depth of your chipboard. You don't want to cut straight to the corner. Okay, so I'm going to cut off a little there, cut off a little here, cut off a little here. I can feel this lightweight chipboard folded in my hand. Okay, so then I'm going to use some double-sided tape, which I had so close to me it was almost on top of me. Here it is. So I've used glue, putting that on, double-sided tape. And this is, uh, you know, tear and tape. My brand, the brand that I use is Expressive, X-E-R-E-S-S. -S. Comes in a whole bunch of different widths, but this is what I use for scrapbooking and stuff. Well, just about anything I do, book making or book, uh, mini album making, journal making, whatever. I love this tape. Okay, got that off, and then I use the table as my, you know, to kind of mash my corners up so I have a pretty fold on the edge. If y'all can see that, I'm just using the table to mash. Turn my two ends in, and then because I cut that paper with a little bit left, it'll make a prettier miter corner, but I do kind of use my fingernails to mush it in. Brayer that down. Brayer that down. And we'll mush this one in. 
that just and when I mush them like that it just makes the corners not quite so sharp on that edge where they kind of tuck in okay so there's my back that's my back well actually this is my back this is my front not that it really matters but on my back what I've done it goes this way excuse me um, yeah and this goes this way okay I have used a glue dot a little sticky glue you could use glue or double-sided tape and I put a magnet right there and then I put a piece of tape double-sided tape right here and double-sided tape down here and then this is the tape the elastic tape like Kathy was talking about that you buy from Hobby Lobby is that fold over double sided elastic tape comes in some real pretty colors and stuff so I used a piece of the kind of champagne tote little metallic looking and I put it down right side down wrong side up right here on this tape and then I cut a piece I fold it over and cut a piece long enough to where it's going to come back in here and I'm going to tape it down and I've got to trim a little bitty piece of it off. Is this your scissors? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma there you go. Okay, so I'm going to trim a little piece of this off because I cut it a little too long. But I want it enough to where it's going to come over the front of my book this way. Now, along with the tape, I'm going to add some glue to it because that is going to get a lot of pull mm -hmm. on. You know, you'll be pulling it off and on, off and on, all that stuff. So I'm going to just peel it back a little bit, put some tape right there. Well, I said I put the tape. I might have lied to you. I put a 20-year supply. Okay. Uh, and then I'm going to put a little bit of tape glue. Pull that up a little bit. So it's got tape and glue. And that goes like that. And remember that magnet's un attached to that chipboard down there. Okay. So I've got the elastic down. And I've got, remember, the magnets up here attached. And this is glued down and taped down. And you're going to see in a minute, I'm going to alligator clip it down so it'll really catch. Okay, now I'm going to apply some glue to the inside of my chipboard. You know, just kind of like that. I'm sorry, it's messy. You can use a little paintbrush if you need to. I have cut this down. I'm using the full width of the felt, and I've just cut it down to the height minus about a quarter inch of my chipboard because I want my paper to show a little bit. So I'm going to work that to where it's, you know, just underneath there over the magnet under the elastic through the woods and oh no that's not right okay so once I've got to this stage because I want these this elastic to really stick I'm going to use these alligator clips you can use a paper clip or something and I'm just going to do this until the glue dries good so that it really adheres to that okay now I'm going to fold this back put a little more smear, smear a little more glue put that on there. So that's my, the back of my book. Now I'm going to have to take time to make sure, let's see, that is facing up and down. So this has to face this way. Let me make sure I'm right. Yep, yep, okay. I'm wanting to make sure that things are facing the right way. So I'm going to turn this towards you. So now I'm going to fold this to where it's over there. And what you'll see is if I use the full width of the felt, because my book is six inches and I've got, you know, I've tucked it in about a quarter of an inch from this edge. When I glue this on, the felt is encapsulated on the inside and it's got about a half inch of raise to where my book can be, um, you know, I can get some thicker stuff in there. Okay. Kathy keeps stealing my glue. I just want y'all to know that. Okay. I'm looking over and I'm like, where's the glue? Okay, I, here you go, ma'am. Where's your glue bag? Your glue bag? little edges that we talked oh, okay. about that might pop up. Yeah, there you go. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's all right. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to put a little more because that just didn't look like enough. Okay, so uh, got a little more glue. Okay, so then I'm going to take and pull that felt over and I'm going to match this book front cover to there. And then open it up so I can see where my felt needs to go. Brayer that down. And I'm saying brayer, you can use a credit card or your hand or anything else you want, but you want to make sure you get good adhesion to the glue and all. Now what you're going to see is, see how this isn't attached to anything. There's no, It's not attached to anything at all. It's what's holding the book together. So right now, 
That is the front of my book. And there's the back of my book. Now that was pretty darn easy. Okay, you might want to make sure, sure, sure you get enough glue there to do that. Okay, so then for my binding, while Kathy used um, twill tape, I did use my Cricut to cut a little scallop edge on this piece of felt, but it would be just as pretty with a straight edge. You could put a little piece of rickrack down there or some other pretty cordings or stuff. But I happened to use um, my Cricut and cut that as a scallop. But I'm using a piece of felt because I can make that dadgum thing as wide or as narrow as I want to, as long as I want to, as long as I'm within the measurements of a piece of felt. So now I'm going to attach it. Does anybody know where my glue is? I swear I keep putting it over here. Give me my glue. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, so I have my glue. Hold on just a second. I get my glue. I'm going to put a little bit of glue on there. A little bit of glue. Just getting those edges that I didn't told yes, everybody about. Okay. You might have to go back okay, in. Okay, so I'm going to put this on. And I'm going to come in a little ways because i got a little work room. And that's going to make a pretty little binding to my book. Okay, then I'm going to roll her over. And I'm going to... Can you see there how thick... Oh, that just fell right off. See how thick that felt is in there so that it... Uh, that's how much my book will open you know that I can get thick things let me put this back on there it isn't quick dry glue is it? it is pretty quick but it's not that here's easy. the glue Molly thank you Kathy I appreciate that so then I'm gonna glue my back and just like the inside I'm going to leave some wiggle room so to speak so that I can add stuff in there okay so there's that so while the twill tape if I have you know I have some pretty laces and things so there's that. So if that glue were to dry, you can see where I've got a pretty binding. It could be as narrow as, and this will dry. I'll put a weight on it and dry it, you know, and let it dry. But you can see how that makes a good, easy, feels good to the hand um, binding and readily accessible. So there's my book. So now on the inside, I have this magnet here. When the book is closed, that piece of elastic has been pulled to the front and comes along here. Again, you can put a pretty piece of, this is pine cones and wood things. I'm thinking I'm going to tie pretty, or drop some charms on there that are pine cones. You have a very cones, pretty pine cone some, charm. She's trying to steal it. Why she's, no, uh, anyway, I've got some pine cone <laughs> charms or some, you know, winter berries or something like that that I'll probably drop off there. When it's open, this piece of elastic, I bend to the back. So now that magnet, I don't want to do it now because it's drying. You can kind of see where that magnet raises up. So what I did, because I wanted to, is I took a piece of chipboard, the good kind that Kathy used for her book. I took a piece of chipboard. <laughs> that terrible. I'm being so mean. She's going to pinch me in a minute. And what I need y'all to know is behind us, there's some cookies. She brought chocolate chip cookies. I mean, they're if, they're I'm still a good, the bag. if I'm a good girl, today, I get chocolate chip cookies. But anyway, so I took a piece of chipboard, took some of my scrap paper, and chomped the covered it with a piece of the print scrapbook paper that I had left on both sides. Chomped my corners so that they're kind of rounded. Sanded them, inked them a little bit. And I have a needle minder. Stuck a magnet on the back of it. So now, when my book opens, see how that just grabbed it? I got a needle minder right there. Is that cute or what? It's I just love that. Cute, so, now that magnet, mm -hmm. that felt, oh, it's, you know what, I hope, did I put, the magnets have to be on a certain way because boy, this thing's repelling itself. <laughs> I think I need to turn my magnet over. Hold on just a second. Let me see if that works. Oh, I can't. Well, heck, I can't get it off now. <laughs> well, anyway, I'll fix that off camera. But make sure, you put your, make sure you put your magnets on the right way because yes. it's trying to repel it instead of grab it. But anyway, so it'll be a cute little needle minder right there. And you can cut it out of that chipboard so easy and use your scrapbook paper to make some needle minders for yourself that match That's what you're really doing. That's a really good idea. We kind of discovered that. So yeah. when, when this is dry, when this elastic is dry, you know, I take these things off. Remember that elastic will then just, let me see if I can do it now. Let's all say a little prayer. So this elastic will then come around the front. Oh, it's, it's good enough. And see, hold my book shut. So that's pretty cute. And then when I'm not using it, I just take and turn this elastic to the back of the book and see, then my, there's my book. Now, when it comes to labeling, Kathy used that piece of paper and the cord and all that kind of stuff on this table somewhere. Oh, here they are. My very, you know, did I mention I'm kind of the lazy one in the group? Uh, I use a strand of thread 
and I'll take one of the, I have these labels, don't know where I got them, I've had them for years, but any old label will do because it will stick pretty well to the felt, but it also pulls off. And what I'll do is I'll just lay that there and I'll put the symbol for the color and then I'll just kind of drop my thread right there. And so if I want to drop another color on there, I just put one right there, put my symbol and, here's my tape. and just pull that, you know, drop my thread right there. So it, for me, they, it's, the thread sticks great to the felt. I have my symbol there and then when I'm through, it's just, you know, two seconds. I've lost the use of these things because they're sticky, you know, they've lost their sticky. But I can reuse my book a dozen times, you know. So then I'll just pull my, hold on, let me pull my elastic cord back around the front. Imagine a pretty charm or something dropping off there. Lightweight, sturdy, feels great in the hand. You can just imagine, this could be lace, this could be pretty fabrics, but I'm telling you the felt is pretty easy. Molly, here's your glue. Oh, thank you, Kathy, I appreciate that. I'm getting more than you could ever know. Okay, so that's as easy as it was. Now let me scoot back over here. Y'all wouldn't believe the mess we have on this table. And get us back to full face. Okay. Coming Kathy. over, Molly. Oh, Lord, help me, Jesus. Okay, there you go. Hey, everybody. How you doing, How you doing uh, Kathy? Good. Good. Well, we, we got through that, and hopefully it was easy enough for everyone to understand. Yeah. You know, in your head, you know what you need to do. You know what the processes that you've used, and, mm -hmm. and but every once in a while, it's kind of like hard to explain. Um, explain that. So there's Molly's. And I was going pretty fast because I was trying to show them and hope they you know keep interest and all the more to the story is cover a couple of pieces of chipboard put yep. some felt in the inside cut it you know pretty and straight and then whatever you use to bind it with just right. has to be sturdy enough to stand you know a lot of opening and closing sure. and things like that and uh don't try to use it until your glue is dry yeah. <laughs> uh, so i love it i love my christmas book i love kathy's book that is so pretty uh, that, that is fun. That so fun so pretty. Do. We've uh, Molly reminded me that we have our the little Christmas uh, in July coming Phew. up, and we mm -hmm. we're getting some things together for that. And um, this was her little intro to that. Um, my this little Mister Spool Samp Santa's at home, adorning oh, my corner. So a lot of people have bought those little Spool Santa. These I so know. cute. Person. I actually put a page on my Instagram. Uh, I copied their, it, it is the Plaid Moose uh, Carving Studio, On and it. Val is uh, the gal that kind of initiates the invoices and, you know, cleans up the Facebook page once people select theirs, but um, he even commented how so many he had gone from, I forget how many subscribers to his Facebook page to, I don't even know how many, but he but was very, very thank happy Thank you all for that. Yeah. So thank you, yeah. I want to show you all just another one real quick. I almost made this one and then remembered uh, Christmas was coming. Let me see if I can hold up. The, the paper little I pulled bees. at first was little bees. So Isn't that cute? And then I had pulled some yellow felt, which I thought was dark. Mm -hmm. And then this was that little gingham, black and white gingham. Oh, let's see, I'm holding up the, the black and white gingham. That's really cute. Was uh, there, so you can only imagine how cute that would be. The sky's the limit on these. The that's sky's why, the limit. You don't want to give dimensions because it is, it, like I said, it might scraps. be a, a, it's scraps. It might be a card that you really, really like and want to preserve it in some way or have it with you. At the end of the day, it's your decision how big these are and you just have to kind of go with that flow. And Kathy mentioned the Christmas cards. I've got to tell you, I have, I think I mentioned that before. I've got some Christmas cards that I've gotten over the years from just different people. I mail out over 150 Christmas cards every year. but uh, So I get some Christmas cards back. But one of the ladies sent, a, uh, several of them have sent Christmas cards that I hang on to, but I don't want to put them back out every year or something. Right. But I'm going to... What a great I'm, way. What a great way to do that. To have that, to be able to look at uh -huh. it and enjoy it. And or to make a little memory right. album out of yep. it or something. But I'm going to have use some of those Christmas yep. cards. So, so all good. Okay, I hope this helped y'all. Yeah, I didn't go too fast on my part. Kathy did a good slow roll uh, showing, so it was good you information. So? Oh, okay. I think so. I All think right. so. Right. Uh, I did want to mention, I teased Kathy um, off camera. The reason she uses this, which is Hobby Lobby, you Yes, said? the, uh, yeah. But, but the reason she doesn't just write on here is it's in the book. Yeah. She could undo it and add yeah. it. But the post-it notes allow you to put just something put right... More. Yeah. And then tear it off, yeah. throw it away, and... I can actually make the key 
of to the colors right here to right from right from your pattern right from mm -hmm. your design where you can maybe take and make a working copy of the key mm -hmm. and attach it right to that too and you so, could write they intend oh, yeah. to write on those and yeah. buy more write on those and buy yeah, more but why if you've got the tape in fact this was the tape where did it go again it's right there in front oh, of me. right the posted tape um, you might want to hold it in front of the camera. Oh yeah, there that's right. I there you go. We're not working on the bottom here. Uh, um, that you can do the entire strip all the way down, mm -hmm. all the way down here, and then all the way down, right on it. Take it off, and you've got your. When you're done with your project, you've got another. And for me, I don't worry about the color. Tape. I just write the symbol. Yep, another piece of tape on the bottom there to start all a, over again. When so. I'm in a project, I couldn't care less. The color is the color. The color is the color. The symbol it is. And that's yeah. the post-it. Uh, you can get these in different widths, too. This was the width that worked best for me. And so. I, I guess a little post-it note would work, too. If you, sure. If you're like me, I have a bunch sure. of different Sure, post-it note. Something. And then, like I said, I did add the uh, the uh, little light bulb uh, clips, pins, whatever you want to call these, just to give me a little bit more, because many of these samplers that I'm working on have buku mm -hmm. enough colors to that that's amazing to yeah the colors there I so, don't, but kind of fun you know it's always fun to to work with fun things too so anyway all okay. right okay guys and gals uh again thank you all i have watched some wonderful floss tubes this week those of you who do floss tubes my hat mm -hmm. is off, off to, to you. all of them and my heart goes is full and full and full of things for you both of us for those too. of you who watch floss tubes yeah. <laughs> yes so you keep yeah, it coming. Don't, you, you, don't forget to uh, like and subscribe, and I don't know what the bell deal is, but if it rings, it sends it you rings. notifications when we upload, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so does that mean everyone's going to get a notification? If they hit the bell, it will tell you when we upload a new one. one. We're trying to upload like every other Sunday, I think is what yeah. we're trying to do. On. Trying to get a routine of every two weeks, which I think is probably going to work best for us. But these tutorials may slip in there any old time. Right. So. Right. If you hit the bell, you'll know when we upload a new one. Now, in July, if I think Kathy and I have discussed, we're probably going to do three or four uh, instead of once every two weeks. Uh, we're going to do them more often so more we can have more content for y'all. She just wants more fudge. That That is the truth. That's absolutely more the pecan, truth. pecan, pecan, What's pecan. What's not You're going to make something other than that, too, huh? Yeah, I, okay. I, I actually got, I have another one. Kathy came up with a cute idea today for floss drops, too. I think you're going to like it. I think so. I think we might have to... I don't start. know. Well, you know, we're at uh, 4,002-something subscribers. Yeah. So. Could we hit 5,000 in the month of... July. July? Well, Christmas in July that we could actually do a nice giveaway. Well, would you, we're, I've got, we've got giveaways planned, so yeah. there will be some giveaways yeah. and, uh, in July. So... It's Christmas. It's gotta Christmas. Have, we gotta have a present. That's so, right. Anyway, okay, guys okay. and gals. Have thanks a good so much. Thanks for coming. Thanks back. for coming. Bye bye. Bye.